howdy, howdy, howdy. Welcome to the show. My name is Diana Nguyen and I am the host and creator of the Snortcast. We've been going live twice a week on the Snortcast. <laughs> I just love live TV. Snortcast. Wow. We've got international. We've got Williamsburg. We've got Ohio, Baltimore, Toronto. We've got Tonga. What? I think people just heard sex in the second second point, so we'll we'll flow from it. <laughs> I am not ready to talk about it. It is <laughs> I just don't Oh my god. What the hell happened to your arm? Howdy, howdy, howdy. Welcome to the show. My name is Diana Nguyen and I am the host and creator of the Snortcast. We've been going live twice a week on the Snortcast. <laughs> I just love live TV. All right. <laughs> I've stuffed it up. It's okay. I'm pressing too many buttons, but welcome to the show. <laughs> it's Monday and I'm tired, everyone. But welcome to the show. I am Dana, your host of the Snortcast, and you might have heard it on repeat. Um, the Snortcast is a fun interview show that I interview comedians from all around the world but this edition is for the Melbourne International Comedy Festival and if you are watching the show please let us know where you are watching this show from. Uh, you know that uh, this show couldn't happen without you. This show started during lockdown last year when in Melbourne None of the comedians could leave their homes after 8 o'clock and it was a perfect way to trap them and to get them to talk about process and why they got into comedy and how you can use comedy in your own storytelling or uh, for your next speaking gig. So please let us know where you are watching from. We are live on LinkedIn, YouTube and also on Facebook. And uh, I also want to let you know that we are live, yep, Follow us on these social media platforms. And also I want to say thank you to my Patreon community who support me with their, um, you know, monthly donation to have the Snortcast happening and also to be a joyful Patreon. So thank you so much for your love and support. Let us know where you're watching from and where you're snorting from. Um, I'm snorting from Melbourne, Australia. So Ugh, how many days? In 10 days, 9 to 10 days, the second largest uh, comedy festival right behind Edinburgh will be launched finally in 2021. We had a little break in 2020, as all of you know, but in 2021 we are coming back uh, and with gusto and we hope to make you laugh and, you know, make up for the laughs of 2020 of silence that we didn't get to do. So this is a special edition where I'm interviewing comedians from the Melbourne International Comedy Festival to talk about their process and, you know, what inspired their show for this year. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our comedian, uh, well, I think that's my third guest for this season. Uh, she is, this is her 20th year in comedy, was Raw Comedy Runner-Up in 2001. Ugh, it's amazing. Um, her show, Things Are Going Well, received a nomination for the Melbourne Comedy Festival Award for Most Outstanding. Uh, Geraldine has appeared on The Project tonight, Tonightly with Tom Billard, um, Have You Been Paying Attention, and Husey, We Have a Problem, and lots of other shows. But also she was um, on a, a main lead actor for a show called Metrosexual. And last night I had the privilege of watching her live on stage in front of 3,000 people at the uh, Maya Sydney Bowl, Sydney Maya Bowl, that's the one, um, yeah, with 3,000 people in the audience and it was such a beautiful and joyous moment to have to hear 3,000 people laugh at the same time. So before I bring her on, I'm just going to show you a little reel of her work, her work and I'm just going to, you know, how this works. Here we go. Here we go. We got it. And... Stop, fuckers. Um, <laughs> anyone ever been to an airport? Great. You, you've been to like through that airport security, you know, the, the body scanner one. A anyone ever set one of those off? Great. I did once because I was too wet. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. 
Okay, I went to Disneyland. Don't be jealous, but I went. And um, I went to Splash Mountain, lived up to its name, yeah? Like there was a mountain and I got splashed. <laughs> like heaps, right? It's quite wet. And then um, had such a great time at Disneyland, a bit late in getting to the airport, had to fly home. Uh, and in my mind, I went, just get through, just check in, get through security, then you can get changed, okay? So I went through security. This is the the body scan, I like to call it the Jesus one, yeah? Because if you, a bit of fun, little, just do, you can do it while you're in there. Do you know, like, it's just a little, <laughs> you know? Get away with it, no problems, you know? Like, if you want to up it a notch, no problem. Do this before you go in, yeah? Just the ones. Just the ones. Oh, it's so tight. Just thank you. <clears throat> also, um, Hello, let's I haven't her figured on. out what's freakier, but to do it, oh, it's Clyde. Welcome to Hello. the interview. Hello, everybody. Hello, Diane. Uh, how thank are you? you? I am good. Long day. We did have a chat before we came on, and it's been a long day here in Melbourne. You've had a pretty big 24 hours. I know, it's full on. 3,000 people, that's so many people, isn't it? <laughs> it's it was insane. Um, <laughs> I just have to, um, I've got a very large dog next to me that breathes quite heavily, so if you can hear that, <laughs> it's it's not me. It's the, the large dog I have next to me. <laughs> All good. But, uh, but also, you know, that performance was at the gala. You're performing mm -hmm. the gala tomorrow night. I know, like what a week. <laughs> it's insane. Like it's, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, obviously it's great. And, but I think last night was really good for, um, I don't know whether it's because I've, you know, this is, like, I think it's like the third time I'm doing the gala. And the gala is something like for any Australian comedian, it's it's a bit of a, a pinnacle because it's the thing that we all grew up watching on TV so it's like, you know, it's one of the only places where you see stand up on TV, like on a regular basis. So this Brit, heavy, Brit, I have to show you her. <laughs> Bachi. Yes. Look at her. Oh, Baba. Anyway, sorry, put everything else. Um, so, yeah, so it's. A bit, so I don't know, so I'm, but I'm feeling a bit more relaxed about it and I don't know whether that's because I've already done it a couple of times or because I've just done the Sydney My Music Bowl in front of 3,000 people, therefore I'm like, oh. Done. Whatever. I'll be, <laughs> but wait, talk to me tomorrow and I'll be shitting, shitting bricks again, you know. <laughs> Love shitting bricks. And for anyone who doesn't know what shitting bricks mean, it's, is it an Aussie slang? I feel like it's a very Aussie oh. thing to say. Shit and bricks, mate. Yeah, uh, maybe. But I think people un understand that that's being nervous. Yeah, but nervous. You get butterflies in your stomach and they're brick layers and they lay bricks and you poop them out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, you know, I've introduced a bit about your bio, but if, if someone had to ask you uh, three things they didn't know about you, what are the three things? Who are you? Who am I? Yeah. That they didn't know about it. So um, I'm Geraldine Hickey and I work in, um, I'm a comedian and also do breakfast radio on a um, community station in Melbourne. Okay, so that's true, comedian, breakfast radio. and. Oh, uh, Triple R, sorry. <laughs> oh yes, that's the name. Through Triple R, yeah. um, R -R -R .au If you want to listen from anywhere in the world, and um, I, what's the third thing about me that people don't know? Um, I, um, I'm just, I love adventure. <laughs> is that enough? Yeah, that's good. I think that's good enough. 
Yeah. But, and, you know, with the adventure, if you had to write a memoir, what would be the title of your book, your adventure book? Um, Geraldine Hickey pulls her finger out. <laughs> like pull, is that just an Australian term as well, pull your finger out? I feel like you're whipping them all out tonight. <laughs> yeah. So pull your finger out is um, is like, come on, get up, get up off your bum, let's go. Like stop yeah. mucking around, like get on with it, like do something, do something. So pull your finger out, I guess, is like, oh, off we go. Yes. Let's, yeah. Let's so, make some comments. So, yeah, do like do so, like I think because I um, have quite often been accused or and have felt that I'm lazy, but I think um, you, I'm not I'm not lazy. No. <laughs> I I do it, but I, yes, it might take me a really long time to do something, but you know. That's probably undiagnosed ADHD and anxiety that gets in the way of that. So I don't think I'm lazy, but I'm trying to change my narrative that I'm lazy because I don't think I am. Um, so the pull your finger out is, Geraldine Hickey pull, pulled her finger out. That's it. Like the and finger was always out. Get amongst oh. it, you know. And Karen Lee uh, from Melbourne said, definitely is an Aussie, that's for sure, ha-ha. <laughs> And then on LinkedIn wrote, pull finger out of what? Oh, just whatever you've got it in, mate. Like pull your finger might be in a in a damn wall or it might be um, up your bum or it might be just in a pie. Who knows? Anywhere. Out of Anywhere. Sock. Yeah. Out of a bird's nest, whatever. Yeah, could be. Like who could knows? Be. Um, what uh, what was your first memory of comedy? Was it when you were a child, or like what real? What made you go? Oh, this is fun. People are laughing. Oh, good question. Um, I think my first memory of well, I think I think about doing like the idea of doing stand up was from watching the gala mm -hmm. on. On TV, and it was I. I think, yeah, I was watching the gala, and also we. Uh, the first time that I thought, oh, I'd love to do that, like watching the gala was just like, oh, they're so funny, and that's that's so cool. But then it was we went on a school excursion when I was in year twelve, in and I grew up in Albury, which is you know, bordered New South Wales, and Victoria, so it's like three hours from three and a half hours from Melbourne and we went we were studying um like in for my drama class we were studying women's theatre and then my drama teacher went well let's let's go see a show at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival um it was a show called Upfront and I went to Upfront in 19 yeah 1997 six 90, 96 97 one of those years um <laughs> And we wow. drove down. It was only like ten of us in the in the class, so we, you know, drove down in cars. Like a, I think a mum and our drama teacher and someone else drove down, and then we went, we went to the Melbourne Town Hall and watched up front, and just seeing those women up on stage, and and not just doing stand up. There was like just like there was sketch and stuff. There was Miss Itchy, who did a. They just threw. They had a beef luncheon fight where they just had sliced up bits of meat and they threw it out into the audience and we all threw it and I just went, this is bananas. And I turned to her and she went, how great is that? I'm like, how much do you want to do this? And she went, yes, mate. And I went, I want to, this is what I want to do. Um, and then it was, so that was my first memory of going, oh, that's, of me being able to see myself being able to do it, you know, that's, that's amazing. Because you can't do what you can't see, and it's so true, you know. I can't believe I can't believe Upfront was like one of that 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 tickling fostering oh. moment because 
as we were talking, like I'm doing upfront for the first time. Mm. Like how satisfying it was for you to do your first upfront. Like what year did you do your first upfront? Um, it was that's maybe 2006 or five or six, something like that. So wow. it was, yeah, so it was about 10 years after. Wow. Um, and it was, and I did it and I kind of weaseled my way in because someone, there was an international comic that had been to see my show and had given me a shout out at when they were hosting at Festival Club. Um and I went up to say thanks, and then like the one of the festival producers was there, and she was like, "Oh, how great was that? Like him giving a plug to you." I'm like, "Yes, it was great. Can I please do up front?" Like it was always on my list, and she's like, "Oh, mate, yeah. Well, okay. Well, email me tomorrow, and I'll see what I can do." And of course, I woke up at like you know eight thirty in the morning. It's like, "Can I please do up front?" Um, and then got on got on the the lineup. And it was, I think, you know, it's one of those things where um, female co comics don't do that very often. We don't kind of force ourselves, like we kind of sit back, well, for me, like and I've, I've noticed with other female, we kind of sit back and wait to be asked, whereas mm -hmm. a lot of our male counterparts will be like, oh, no, I deserve, like put me on, like I want to do this. And it's yeah. one of the first times where I've gone, no, can I please do this? I want to do this. Um, and did it, and it was, oh, couldn't, like, it was just a, amazing, so amazing. And I'd done and my show, and I think I was doing my show in, like, the backstage room at the town hall, so it was, I had to, like, I went, and it was one of the first nights where I'd sold out my show as well. So I went from, I walked out in the town hall and was, like, did my five minutes or whatever and then walked off stage and then went around the back and then all, you know, all the other actors and stuff around the back and they're going, oh, that was great. I'm like, I don't have time, thank you, and just ran, just kept on running, like went from the mic on stage, ran to like my little backstage, which is just me standing behind a curtain. Yes. And then it wasn't until I was standing there waiting for my audience to come in that I was just like just went, oh, like that, that it hit me that I would just, I just like one of my dreams just came true, you know. Yeah. Anyway, it was great. So you're gonna have a great time. Oh, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful that that moment of someone throwing out sandwich like bread into yeah, the, the audience. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. Anyway, it was so good. Anyway, that's great. Um, and on that topic, you know, who inspires your comedy? Like, who kind of makes you go, ugh. I want to make comedy like that or like kind of makes you want to improve your comedy. What what tickles that? Uh, I certainly have friends that I see have, I get inspired by other comics' work ethics um, and I think number one on that list is, is Celia Pacola, who I know you've had on as, as a guest. And I think because we were housemates for a number of years and friends, you know, for years before that as well. But I would just, and I, I directed her first ever solo show and it was from directing her show that I, I saw firsthand how much work she puts into something and, you know, I'd be like, oh, okay, so we're working on this, so just, you know, show me what you've got. And for any other comedy, and for me, it would be like, oh, just talk and stuff, whereas she would send me a multiple-page script of yes. her show and it just was like, and and then, I, you know, we'd talk about it and, you know, I'd give it notes and stuff and then she would go away and rewrite that and then bring it back and then we'll be able to work again from that. And I, you know, and also, you know, I was living with her when she first started working on Rosehaven and it was just like, her, wow. like it was just a job and she just approached everything like a job and she just got stuff done. And I was like, oh, that's how we should approach comedy. Like it's, this is our job. You know, yeah. it's not just a hobby. It's, you know, so um, so I get inspired by her. I get inspired by my other mate, Edo, who, or Ann Edmonds, who just makes me laugh so much that my back hurts. 
Do you know what, you know when you get those laughs where you go, oh, oh my back, like I can't tell you the amount of times that we've been out and just have laughed over the silly things. And she's like the a comic that I will quite happily, whenever she's on, I, Oh, well, well, just got a bit of a glitch at the moment. <laughs> Are you still there? I'm here. Can you? Yeah, cool. Got it. I'm here. Got, got okay, good. Good, good, good. Yeah, so uh, Edo would make your back break by, from laughing. Yeah, so she's fun. Always happy to watch Edo. Um, and yeah, same thing. It's the work ethic. Like they, you know, yeah. comics that just can bring consistency. Just go, yeah, I'm doing another show. Here's what, you know, and just new jokes all the time. Like it's, yeah, the consistency of work. And, you know, Arnie Donna are the same. The oh, way that they yeah. approach their, you know, you know, shared, shared an office space, for, like, you know, had, it, the same office building um and they would be that you know nine to five like they they go to work at nine o'clock in the morning and they yeah. finish it you know so yeah. it's i that's what inspires me yeah no auntie donna i interviewed them last year and they hijacked my whole show <laughs> <laughs> For a full hour, I couldn't ask any questions and it became their show. And I was like, yeah. all right, everyone was bawling for it. But I, I do get you back, um, Anne Edmonds. I did her show Fancy Boy and oh. I had to, had to play her pimp bitch. Like I was the, her pimp, I was pimping her out and she, I just couldn't, like, had to so hold funny. it in. She's so, so funny. funny. Yeah, <laughs> love it. <laughs> Yeah, she's great. Um, if you have a question for Geraldine, please ask a question on Facebook Insta or on Instagram. There's an Instagram. Uh, Facebook and LinkedIn and we'll get to the Q&A at the end of the show. But talking about acting, you're, you're also an actor. You had a lead role in Metrosexual. Yeah, which is, um, it's, it's, we've been called an, called an actor, but I, you know, I love it. And like it, that was what I wanted to be growing up. Like ah. I wanted to be wanted to be an actor, um, but but I think that also had something to do with not realizing that I could be a stand up comedian. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so got did metrosexual and it was um, yeah amazing. What a, it was such a great experience and it was such a the show. Um, you know, I'd really loved the idea that, like, a, that you know, it's got a meaning to it as well. Like, it's you know, it promotes positive sexual health, and you know, I think most of the cast learned things. And um, you know, this, I think one of my favourite episodes was the one where it was set in a um, retirement home, because it just it's something that people don't often think about that it's um you know stds can be a problem because they don't use protection and it's like it's not like you know once you hit a certain age you stop having sex they they they're getting it on you know <laughs> and they don't they you know homes don't provide condoms then all adequate you know Social health education and stuff, then you know it's going to be anyway. It was just you know things like that where you do things that you don't normally think about, and you go, oh, okay, yeah. But it was yeah, it was heaps of fun. Loved it. I just love the idea of um, seniors and nursing homes getting STIs. <laughs> I know, right? And probably true. Like yeah, there's probably no vending machines they could reach and put their money in. <laughs> It's just like, put them in the basket in the in the bathrooms, you know. Just give it to um, them. It be available. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, oh, great. Uh, well, I was going to say, well, what a surprise because that's your show for the Melbourne Central Comedy Festival. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is 
uh, ooh, where is it? Uh, March 25th to April 18th. I didn't put the April, but I will very soon. 610, you can book tickets at the link there and you can book every other comedian that's going to be at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. I guess my question is uh, what topics inspire you and how do you start writing these ideas down? Because I've uh, seen you riff off an idea which like last night I saw you talk about the birds. Like, yeah. You went, you did the whole set about birds. It's beautiful. But how do you, yeah. how does that start? Uh, yeah. Oh, it always starts with something that's happened to me in real life, um, like in terms of, you know, just bits that I do. Like, um, and the bird show was, I went to a bird show. And I think from working in radio, it's, my job is to come up with the content and you, we don't have, it's not like I'm coming up with something, I'll go, oh, have you ever been to a bird show? Give us a call. Tell us about your bird show experience. Um, well, like we don't really do phones because there's no one there to answer the phones. Like it's yeah. it's just us in the studio. Like we've done it and it's just us going, answering the phone live on air and going, yeah, tell us about that time you went to a bird show. And then going, oh, sorry, I was just wondering what time you offered it. I'm like, oh, I'd say. So it's, so for me, you know, my job means that I essentially, I just have to come up with stuff, something to talk about for seven minutes every morning. And so sometimes it's like I might have been to a bird show and then I talk about, going to that bird show and what it was like. And so I've got to think about how do I, um, you know, I'll get some little nugget. I'm like, how do I polish up that nugget to mm. make it entertaining for seven minutes? So I, you know, find something that might seem really boring and mundane and just nothing and then kind of look at everything else about it and, off of that and so it starts off with something on radio that then I'll like I'll just notice it, oh, something about that and I'll kind of add to it and add to it like obviously you know last year the job was quite tricky <laughs> trying to come up with stuff every day when no one was doing anything and yes. also if anyone was doing anything like people in lockdown they don't no one wants to hear about your shit like if they're stuck at home, do you want, like it was, so yeah. I ended up, I started to, like we dug out agapanthers yes. at home. I was going to hear about that. Because, yeah. So um, that, you did at the Snortcast lineup show and people were carking themselves. Yeah. You just and that, it. <laughs> I know. And it's so, so like, like as a premise, I've dug out some agapanthers is so righto. Like because people are going, what's agapanthers? Yeah. And other people are going, oh, what? Why is that funny? But I've just, I just kept on talking about it on the right because that's all I was doing. Like it took weeks to dig out those agapanthers. So it was like almost on a daily, I'd give daily updates on agapanthers and people would, you know, they'd be mad about the way I pronounced agapanthers. They'd be <laughs> mad about the way I was digging them up. They'd People would be mad about the fact that I was still talking about agapanthers and it was just like, anyway, now it gets to the point where every time I do that material, I have people send me like pictures of agapanthers or they'll go links to like screenshots of Agapanther or gardening clubs and stuff, talking about how much they hate Agapanthers. It's like, you know, who would have thought there's a whole subculture of people that hate or love Agapanthers? But, man, it's out there. It's out there. No, definitely. I remember mm. that night we just kept going. We were, we were going with you and we just couldn't believe. It was like watching gardening porn, really. Like what you were <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but um, I get what you mean by people because like, now that you're, you know, getting all all that information about agapanthers, is that how you say it? I'm having trouble. Agapanthers, yeah. 
Well, because my show is called Chasing Keanu Reeves, I, mm. I get sending me clips about Keanu Reeves or figurines. Like, it, yeah. yeah, once you brand him. Yeah. <laughs> my brand is Agapanthers right now. But, but it's, you know, it was the bird show was from the last show that I did. So, you know, birds are something. Well, I mean, I love birds anyway and sort of have grown to love the movie, especially during lockdown. It's like, oh, what else are you going to do? I'll go out and look at some birds. So, but it just, yeah, it's amazing how much, you know, one thing just, I guess, yeah, becomes your brand, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love it. Well, I, I, I'm going to you know, go somewhere else now uh, with the interview, which is we t- um, today's been a big day in Melbourne. We had March for Justice and we both attended it. Um, and it was part, it was huge conversation that was had last night at the performance too. It was encouraged that we all came out because, you know, you have 3,000 pe- 3, people in the audience. Um, I guess for me, like when I, when I do the snort cast and snort cast comedy, it's about diversity and gender equality. Um, how has comedy changed from you from 20 years ago when you started, like 2001, to where you're at? Um, and uh, is there more that we can do with the progress of comedy? Oh, there's always more you can do. But it's 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 changed, obviously, heaps, yeah. heaps. Like, like doing your show and just, and it was, for me, it just looked like it was effortless for you to book a lineup that was that diverse. Mm. Um, and, and that's the way it, it should be. Um, but obviously there are, there's always more that, more that we can do but it, now it means like I'm I can do gigs where I'm not the minority you know like when I first started out it was like oh oh we've got a we've got a check on oh there's a lady and like and just and doing big shows it was like oh we've we've already got our one female so and missing yeah. out on things because we've we've already got the we've got the one female you know so sorry um i did shows in in adelaide last week um with, yes yeah lizzie. yeah 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 with lizzie who um denise scott and cal wilson so it's all, all female line up and we just yeah. talked about like one of the last nights we were there we we're just there for a week one of the last nights we were just talking about how great it was to be backstage with just just women and the difference that of the energy backstage that is like the, you know, normally you're around other comics and especially, you know, male comics can tend to be a bit alpha. (laughs) And so when you're trying to get, it's like, it's so exhausting having to go, Oh yeah. Just, and it's just nice to be backstage with just other women. Mm. And it's just not, there's no, competition and stuff and yeah so I mean so that you know 10 15 years ago was unheard of unless it was like one night a year you know you do something like up front um but it was never you know the idea of it being more common and even like last night it was uh it was an all um female lineup um but that wasn't planned they didn't like Zoe said we didn't we didn't plan that like we didn't go oh let's do a show at the bowl because her and Hannah you know obviously organized it together but it's, the two of them were like they didn't go well let's make sure we just book all women they just went who do we think's funny who do we really like right now and then all of a sudden it's just it's all women you know yeah. um so yeah, obviously that's great, but there's still yeah more to be done. I mean, there's people like you that are, you know, um, I don't know how far along, like how much of a conscious effort you make to book a diverse lineup, and I feel like that maybe you just you're a bit like Hannah and Zoe, and just go, oh, I just book people that are good, and it's like, oh, what? 
what? There's, <laughs> there's some non-binary people and some people of colour? What? How did that happen? Whereas, um, you yeah, know. You were, I, on, you were on the night where there were two non-binary performers, I think. Oh, no. Was that? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and they had to scout. follow each other. I'm like, how does that feel? Like you bit a bit of competition finally, you know. But it was, I. But I, I think when it gets to the stage where other room bookers don't have to go, oh, I haven't, oh, I've got to tick a bloody diversity box. Like when it gets to the point where they're not going, oh, and just going, oh, what? That's, you know, when we've reached the next level and then I don't know what you do after that. Yeah. Just have, well, you know, accessibility I think will be, will, I'd love to see more of that. I'd love to see, um, you know, because I've got a, a um, I've got an Auslan interpreter for one of my shows, but it's, it's just one of my shows. But it's like what if you're deaf and you're not available on April 8th, what do you, what do you you just can't come to my show like I'd you know I mean I I pay that Auslan interpreter to come and you know if we would well maybe I should just you know you know and and if there's more interpreter like I'd I'd love that I love it if the system was um what night do you want an Auslan interpreter like if you want to come to a show and you need an interpreter I'll I'll get them in. I wish that was the system, um, or it, they just had them at every every show. I mean, you know, that's the other thing. Like, it, comedy festival has a thing now where you have to have, um, you know, access, as in, you know, no stairs, or lifts, and stuff. Disability access to to your shows, and if you're in a venue that doesn't have disability access, then you have to do at least one night in a venue that that does um and that's you know that didn't happen 10 years ago it was just like oh sorry too bad you can't you can't come yeah. but then you know we had Stella Young came on the scene and she she got some shit done <laughs> she's like no nah, this is fucked you know let's do this so you know and it's because she was part of the industry that we you know got to learn a lot and um you know, so I think, you know, the more we include, the more we learn and the more everything gets better. That's it. The and I, thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I totally get what you're saying because I did a gig with Lizzie the week before, but mm. it was all Asians. It was in Sydney. So, yeah, yeah. Yes. So then, she, um, and, yeah, we were just going, why does this feel so easy? Like I'm not <laughs> competing against you where we're in the same clan, but because mm. we, it's always that we've been pitted against each other because it's at one spot. So yeah. and for the first time, we're like, oh, actually, no, I'm competing with you so that we, you know, uh, are funnier together, not mm. because we're trying to fight over a position in a lineup. So, yeah, I totally yeah. get you. You talked about Adelaide, and I love those videos. You and Lizzie on the on the ride, right? You that to her, like, every night. <laughs> Every night there was our post show ritual. There was the theme park ride that we would, yeah, and it would just be. It was just such a, a good way to like release that extra adrenaline because it's you know you're excited after a, a show. Just so it's just and it's like it was a big swing and we're like ah, it was you know so yeah, it was the best. Like it's to the point where like what are we gonna do in Melbourne? Like bring in a carny ride for us so we can go on it after our shows in Melbourne, you know. Yeah. Hire a carriage and take you around the city. You know, that probably be a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. Um, I've got one more question before we go to the audience, which is uh, most of our audience are from LinkedIn and these are corporate people who want the funny bone. What okay. would be your quick tip for a comedy tip for a person who wants to get funny doing, you know, a TED Talk or in front of their boardroom? What would be a, a good comedy tip for them? Mm. Um, don't try too hard. <laughs> I think um, just um, don't, like if you've got a little joke, don't 
don't over egg it. Don't be like, uh, uh. Yes, <laughs> like if, if they haven't if they haven't taken it in, then like just move on. Also, don't don't pause for too long. If you if you have dropped something, like that that's too long. You yes. just give it a little. If they don't, <laughs> the fish don't bite, then like put put another line in and yeah. see where that goes. But just keep keep going, you know. Yeah, I'm writing this down. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to go to a Q&A and thanks for joining us. We've got Hamanshu from India. We've got Karen from Melbourne. We've got Germany watching. Thank you for joining the show. I've not heard this country before. It, it's oh. That sounds exotic. Uh, thank you for joining <laughs> Dubai. We've got Singapore. Uh, oh, we've got Dubai again. Thank you, Dubai. Bangladesh. We've got Cyprus. Good morning, Cyprus. Pakistan. Germany, you're in town. Thank you Amazing. for joining. Uh, Karen says hello. Hi, uh, Karen. We've got Malta. Thank you. She, Karen's been busy on the chat room. She's like 3,000 is huge. Yes, yeah, it mate. is. Dubai, uh, India, well, good turnout from there. Oh, Florida, we've got one American. Thanks for joining. Yay. And Catherine McClintock, she's definitely from Melbourne. Uh, oh, hello, first, Matt. First question I have is from Emily from Florida. Have you read Jerry Seinfeld's new book, Is This Anything? Oh, do you know what? I I haven't. I've read bits of it, but I actually got it for my um my father in law or future father in law for Christmas this year, um because he he only discovered Seinfeld in the last couple of years, and <laughs> and it's and he loves it so much. But he, it's to the point where he talks about he talks about Jerry and Elaine and George like they're his friends yes. like he will like there's been points where he goes like where I've missed the start of the conversation where he's gone I was watching Seinfeld and then he will be like oh yeah and then Elaine came in and did this and blah and I'll be like are you are you talking about Seinfeld he goes yeah it was another great episode like he was just he just had discovered it on you know It'd be on like late at night on one of the channels, and he had one of those set top boxes where you could record. So he just, you know, set it to record anytime Seinfeld would play, it'd record it, and he'd just sit back and watch it. So I got him the book for Christmas, which meant so I have read some of it, but I haven't read it. I've just listened to him sit there and read it out. And I tell you what, a lot of it's in the timing, isn't it? Like comedy is absolutely about timing. And you know when your father-in-law reads it out, it's it's funny, but for different reasons. <laughs> Great, and I I I listened to um, Jerry Seinfeld, Tim Ferriss's podcast recently, and he made a really good analogy about comedians. And you know, you've done a TV show, so he said, um, "This is what Jerry Seinfeld said." He said, "A a film production is a yacht. You've got people working underneath to make sure the yacht operates." Oh, a cruise cruise ship. Mm -hmm. um, then you've got the TV production, which is the boat. It's you know a low, drop lower down, but a comedian is the surfer. They're on that board, mm -hmm. testing every wave on their own, and there's no one there to help them out. And he, yeah, and I was like, oh, that's good because you that surf too. Analogy. No, but you surf. I'm I can't surf, mate. I mean, I wish I could, but I'm rubbish. <laughs> Like, but I've, you know, my partner bought me a surfboard, but it was like a foamy and it's small. It's too small. It's too small. Like I can't even, I can't even lie on it. It's that small. Um, and, yeah, I can't. And I, I I bought a, like a body board, like a boogie board last year. And even, I can't, mate, I can't catch a wave at all. I can't even, I thought I could body surf, but I just, my partner was watching me one day. She goes, "No, you just get a gentle nudge from a wave. Like that's, like that's that's the extent of your surf." But you know, I love obviously love being in the ocean. But I just get a little. Oh, oh, I can't. Yeah. 
<laughs> Love it. Um, Karen's asked, are there any topics which you don't tend to go near or are off limits for you, Geraldine? Uh, oh, nothing's off limits if it's ha happened. If it's happened to me, I tend to talk a lot about it from personal experience. So if I haven't experienced something, then I probably wouldn't talk about it. Um, just, but that's that's just because of my style of. It wouldn't suit my style of comedy. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's just. But I mean, obviously, there is stuff that's happened in my life that I hasn't, I haven't turned into to comedy. Um, but yeah, in general, unless it's a lived experience for me, or I can imagine it to a certain extent, I will kind of yeah leave it leave it alone. And also, like yeah, I think I've, in the past I've kind of tried to be a bit political, and it just hasn't. It hasn't worked. It's like, come on, mate. That's it's not you. Like, um, and that's not to say that I'm not political, but or yes. you know that I um, talk about my. I I just think it, I'd rather my values and beliefs and political standards kind of come off a bit more naturally in by my actions of you know. I guess what I'm saying, but rather than going, like I would, I guess, never um, go, like, rape is bad. <laughs> like it will just come across in yes. other things that I've said. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, but you wouldn't do a joke about it. And I, which, yeah, I think you, I think because you've done comedy for so long now, you just know what works. Like, yeah. Well, and I think it also, it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like in the shows that I do, like I've done plenty of shows where I've talked about, um, you know, sad things Ooh. and traumatic things. Like the first show I ever did was about a week that I spent in a psych unit. So I've done the anxiety and the depression and, you know, oh, like I've done the, guys, this is really bad. But now look at me. I'm, great and you can be great too whereas I think the now I try to find the yeah the mundane things or the everyday things and go how great is this how great, what? like you went for a walk today how how awesome is that so I like rather than my audience leaving with a sense of oh good on her that was whoa that was full on but yeah I feel good like I just want them to walk away feeling oh that was that was fun like that was oh isn't that isn't love good that's you know that's kind of my aim now yeah that sounds great which is the mastery of storytelling really yeah it's, yeah it's yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm working my, i'm working my way <laughs> Um, we've got Keith joining us from Keyport, West, uh, WA, not WA, but from the US. Thanks for joining, Keith. Uh, Karen said, little blue pills everywhere, yet no condoms. Correct. <laughs> Christian from Fran France has asked me, do you speak French, Diana? Uh, no, no, I don't. <laughs> um, Bonjour, Karen's je m'appelle. There you go. Um, I, don't, Karen I don't speak French. <laughs> <laughs> is it mainly improv based on what has happened on what has happened? I'm not sure what that question is. Is it mainly improv based? No, you said um, the rape question, wasn't it? Like that would inspire you to start creating story. Yeah, if I'm doing radio, certainly improv comes in, like it's a lot of my material I won't necessarily write. It'll mm. be I have an idea or a story that I want to tell and sometimes quite often that will start on radio but not always but if I'm doing um working on new things I will um kind of yeah go to an open mic room and just go I'm just gonna I'll just see where this goes I'll have you know basic ideas but it's never really written down so I mean there's improv in that sense that I just kind of go oh okay blah 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 and I keep talking and and then record it and then go back and then go, oh, that, that bit worked. and But, yeah, that improv kind of thing. 
Um, Joseph from Singapore says, hello, keep crushing it. Uh, Uganda, hello. And I've got one more question. This is a question from me. Mm -hmm. um, what is a question you would ask Keanu Reeves if you ever met him? Oh. <laughs> I ask Keanu Reeves. Um, how do you, like, what, what kind of coffee, what's your coffee order? Like <laughs> I feel like I just, I feel like he would be like a goat milk latte. <laughs> and I want to see if that's right. Okay, great. Maybe yeah. we need a Starbucks standby. Yeah. 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 I, I would love a show about Starbucks and workers behind the counter. <laughs> What's your, what's your coffee order? <laughs> I love it. Um, that's it for tonight. See ya. Thank you. <laughs> um, so this is the show. I'll just put it back up again. Um, where is it? What is what? What surprise? What a surprise! Damn it! How did that happen? Hang on. What are what a and what are? What a surprise. What a surprise. What a surprise. There you go. Like it's you it's go. almost a continuation of my last show was things are going well. Yes. So it's like things are going well and this is just the next chapter of my life into what a surprise and the next year's show will be things are still going well. <laughs> Great. Like oh, it's a trilogy. Really it's, but you don't need to see the first one to understand <laughs> the second it's like um, it's like Jurassic Park. You can come in at any time, no problem. You know, I'll I'll, I'll keep you I'll keep you up to date. It's just that all you need to know is my life is good. Look 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 at the so that's actually a normal glass of wine. I've just got tiny hands. Um, I've got my nut water. There you go. Cheers. Cheers, uh, Geraldine. Thank you so much. Uh, please check out her show. What a surprise. March 25th, April 18th, 610. Uh, go catch it. You uh, you better not miss it because it will get you cracking and rolling out for the Comedy Fest because you're up so early. 610 is great in hindsight. You, you wrap home it up. Seven, home by yeah. 7.30. That's the dream. It's the dream. Like if you can come to my show and still be home to watch bloody Married at First Sight if you want it. Like if you're into that, like I'm, I'm happy. Like, yeah. if, uh, you know, do it just to live your life. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, watch Geraldine's and then come see mine at 9.40. I'm the, I'm the sleep end. The oh, vampire. great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So cool. come to my show, then that's perfect because you can go have dinner somewhere, um, get a goat milk latte or, and then away Generally. you go. That's, yeah, it's perfect. It. Love it. Um, love it. Thank you. You, you, Thank you. Shall go. Thanks, guys. We'll see you all next uh, this Friday. I've got Nikki Britton on. Uh, thanks for joining the Snorkast. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Welcome to the show. My name is Diana Nguyen, and I am the host and creator of the Snorkast. We've been going live twice a week on the Snorkast. <laughs> I just love live TV. Snorkast. Um, we've got international. We've got Williamsburg. We've got Ohio, Baltimore. Toronto, we've got Tonga, 